Eyeball Sync Capital Academy, lighting your way to capital solutions. Welcome to this episode of Capital Academy. Capital Academy is all about bringing information to the early stage and startup company ecosystem so that entrepreneurs uh, can get a feel for what others are going through and to know that they are not in it alone. On today's episode, I have John Marshall joining me and we will talk to two entrepreneurs who have been in business for a while and they have a couple of stories to tell. But first, let me have everyone introduce themselves. John, please. Hi, I'm John Marshall, Ace Notions Consulting. Hi, uh, my name is Pierre Walters with Blue Artists LLC. I'm Charles Williams with Electronic Health Network. All right, and I want to open the conversation first by giving both of you an opportunity to tell us a little bit about your company, and if you'll also include in that how long you've been in business, because again, I, I want to be able to talk about some of the things you've gone through to still be in business. So Pierre, please, can you give us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and how long you've been doing it? Certainly. Uh, so. Uh, my name again is Pierre Walters. I'm the senior producer and CEO uh, over at Blue Artists, which is a, uh, well, we started off as a local producing firm, a video producing firm. And now we are a full service creative agency, a brand platform for entrepreneurs who are looking to build and expand their branding uh, so, they can, so they can expand their audience. Uh, we've been in business since 2006, uh, so at this point over 10 years. And uh, uh, it's, been a, it's been a wonderful journey, so I'm glad to be here with you today. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing parts of that wonderful. It's <laughs> <laughs> a journey, period. Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm Charles Williams with Electronic Health Network. Uh, myself and Adelie Abdul-Karim had started the uh, Electronic Health Network actually back in 2007 when there was no such thing as a health information exchange or data exchange services for healthcare. And we had a vision that we just wanted to not do paperwork <laughs> and share medical records. And, uh, and now we've been on this journey and I would love to share uh, some stories about how we got here. Okay, wonderful. Now, John, just because we're questioning them, you don't get out of this because you are also an entrepreneur. So. Um, can you give us a little information about uh, your journey? My journey's been long. I've, I've okay. been longer, longer than all of you guys. Part of your the short part of the journey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, uh, I'm, I'm retired military, Vietnam veteran, and uh, I've been doing consulting since really since 1982, and I started doing some uh, work with one of the uh, major minority-owned companies, Network Solutions, which was doing all of the IP addresses for uh, Department of Agriculture, and I'm the vice president for um, marketing and sales. And uh, ironic, when you talk about a journey, my journey started in the file room of, uh, <laughs> of, of, of our company. No one really knew about business development, and so people said, okay, here's your office, and it was in the file room, and every time I'd get on the phone, somebody would knock on the door, and said, we need a file out of the file cabinet. You know, and I'm trying to sell. But um, eventually, uh, the company was very successful. They did $45 million, and They sold the company and became you know, pretty well known. So, but then after that, I really picked up uh, uh, a company. And I started doing some work uh, with another partner. My other company was called Marlar Technology, where we were a woman-owned business. Mm. And um, journeys are good. Right. They're fun. <laughs> uh, a lot of fun, a lot of bumps in the road, but uh, that, that's what happened. Uh, we eventually uh, broke up because my, I'm a person that believes, and we, we're talking, uh, a person that believes in relationships, mm -hmm. right. selling, right. and some other people believe in money mm -hmm. and uh, right away. So you, you have to look at how, how you look in relationships. She didn't believe that uh, establishing relationships were was a basis. Uh, we did some Y2K. We did all of the Y2K for the city of Wilmington. Right. Okay. And uh, when no one else wanted to do it, none of the big sixes or the big mm -hmm. fours wanted to touch it. And we did it. We made about uh, $1.5 million doing the Y2K where everybody was worried about something this. Something that didn't happen. It, something didn't happen. Not you know? bad. But the unique <laughs> thing was they were talking about water towers. They were right. talking mm -hmm. about the locks on the prison. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. coming out, and everybody, <laughs> all, all of the, all of the prisoners out, and uh, 
And uh, you know, it, it was just fantastic because I ran around the city in a police car. California breaking off. Well, the toll bridges, you know, come Delaware right. and there, and all the toll right. booths not operating, but none of that happened, and we were lucky. So, um, one point yeah, five, yeah. but nothing happening is not bad. You know, yeah, like, I want that. I yeah, want that. That, that was one point yeah. five million dollars, <laughs> and uh, we were a minority-owned, woman-owned mm -hmm. business, and uh, we, we were pretty successful. Then from there on, I've been doing just individual consulting um, to uh, business. Uh, my background is uh, organizational development, uh, which I did in the military. So kind of unique background. I have a master's degree in aviation management from Emory Riddle Aeronautical University. And some people say, Where do, what, what is that all about? <laughs> well, I, I, I couldn't fly, so <laughs> <laughs> they gave me a degree in, in uh, aviation management. And I was teaching, so uh, I have fun doing that. So. Okay. And I'm, can I talk about peaches? Oh, gosh. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> Pierre, round it out a little more for us, uh, you know, and again, tell us a little more of your journey, and right. and mm -hmm. I'd like to hear in that journey some of the, um, some of the, the issues you've had to mm -hmm. overcome mm -hmm. in order to continue in, in the path of your business. Well, you know, my journey, Lorette, is, is, his started in 1982. I wasn't even born until 85. Well, thank you very wow. much. So, <laughs> so you have a little bit of a, <laughs> a little bit of a head start. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, when I my first sort of my dipping my toe into entrepreneurship uh, began when I went to college and needed to find a way to pay for my way uh, through college. I started as a telemarketer, actually um, uh, selling or trying to sell mortgages, trying okay. to sell people uh -huh. the idea of refinancing. And this was right before the, the collapse. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I, I learned through that very arduous process that, that um, I, I had a knack for selling. Okay. Um, well, I think more specifically, I had a knack for connecting with people over the telephone. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was a very interesting experience in my life. It, it, it's something that helped to validate skills that I didn't realize that that I could use. Um, and uh, I later went on to uh, begin an acting career and, and then that transitioned into a directing career and that directing career uh, earned a lot of wonderful accolades and opportunities and awards and uh, just uh, being able to travel across the world and uh, direct television and music videos and films. Um, and, uh, and, and so that, that really was fantastic for, for me as my own sort of fulfillment. But as a business owner, uh, what, I <laughs> what I experienced was in 2008 or I think 2009 when they launched the iPhone. Okay. Uh, this changed things dramatically mm -hmm. for my business. My business um, uh, existed primarily to support my directing projects. Okay. And, uh, but when the iPhone, <laughs> when the iPhone was announced and uh, I could see down the, down the line that pretty soon people won't need people like me, uh, they'll just have these little things in their hands. They can just <laughs> go around and press a button and, and yep. done. You don't yep. need to spend thousands now <laughs> on a crew to come in and do a commercial right. and all that. That scared me, right. and I knew we needed to reimagine. So that's a major business. pivot. Th it was, yes, mm -hmm. it was. And so at that point, we uh, we pivoted, we transitioned. It took it took about a year or two, but we but we transitioned into being more of a full service creative mm -hmm. agency, mm -hmm. and um, that took us down a journey where we soon learned the pain points of being an agency, and recognizing that, uh, you know, uh, while we may while while we may we may provide a a wonderful experience for our uh, for our clients. We weren't really providing a wonderful experience for our subcontractors, the people who are actually a part of the agency. And one of the things that I learned was that uh, as soon as you start taking commission off of off of subcontractors, mm -hmm. their work, that's that's when it becomes very difficult to to standardize things and, gotcha. and create sort of a level experience where you can offer competitive prices to your clients. Right in our case being the business owners. So we needed to reinvent the agency business model. And, uh, and, and so we did that in 2013. We launched our membership program. Mm -hmm. And our membership program completely reimagined 
how we engage not just with business owners who are our mm -hmm. primary clients, but also with subcontractors. We wanted to provide an experience for our subcontractors that said to them, look, we're not taking a commission. We're not dipping our toe into your rates. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're going to make sure that you're paid on time uh, at your rate, which you think is fair, regardless of what our relationship yeah. with the client is like, with that small business owner. What was the length of time before you, um, so again, entrepreneurs wind up running into issues when they see that there's a problem, mm -hmm. and whether they overcome it or not, there's a length of time in between, I recognize there's an issue, and now I've overcome. How, what was the time frame in between you being able to work through that process? Um, you know, I recognize that there is a problem with the agency model mm -hmm. probably two years into becoming a full service agency. Okay. Uh, and the problem was always just, you know, basically how do I, how do I handle disgruntled subcontractors? Mm -hmm. um, and, and I realized that, you know, if I'm constantly trying, or if we as a company are constantly mm -hmm. trying to appease our contractors, mm -hmm. It, it puts its, it, it, it takes away leverage from, right. from us as an entity or as an organization to be able to negotiate the kind of contracts and deals we want to have with our business owners, our actual clients. So I'm going to segue, however, it's so interesting hearing you say that because as someone who has been in corporate America, everything you just said sound like personnel. Right? Mm -hmm. When you're trying to run the yeah, organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. HR. Uh, exactly. It's, it's HR, exactly. You know, and that's and what the an yeah. agency really, I mean, yeah. it's yeah. just you're managing a bunch of right. personnel. Yeah. Gotcha. So, yeah, yeah. And that, that's interesting. Your, your question is, uh, you know, how long did it take you to realize mm -hmm. that you had an issue that you had to deal with mm -hmm. that was going to take your business in another direction? Yeah. And, and a lot of CEOs sit there and, and they don't know how to approach that they're, because they're so accustomed to, to, to having and running the business yep. themselves. Yep. And so when it comes time to do that, they say, oh, you know, how do I do this? Yeah. 2008 and nine took me yeah. into one of those and, yeah. and I'll, I'll spill my story in the moment. <laughs> Charles, I'd love to hear also from you. So your journey going in issues that you've had to deal with mm -hmm. and then overcome them and i'm assuming you've overcome them because you're still sitting here <laughs> in, in business here. today <laughs> exactly well i'm gonna say uh, my mother said this she said son you've always been an entrepreneur you never played by the rules mm. and uh from a, from as a child i've always done entrepreneurial activities and um i remember when i was in the military i was in the air force and I was looking for something to do because I was bored, to be honest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I wanted to do something. And I started, I remember looking at an ad in the paper. I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but I'm thinking about it right now. Uh, and it was uh, Repair Credit. Okay. And so I bought the book. I started studying the, uh -huh. the credit repair laws. Next thing you know, I, I'm opening a little <laughs> side business while I'm in the military, uh, helping people repair their credit. Right. So that, it, it just keeps going and going and going. Yeah. And then I, another thing I noticed that after I left the military, every job I had, I got fired from. So I said, you know something, um, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to stick with the business thing and I'll just keep doing this. And I remember uh, getting involved with uh, merchant accounts and the credit card industry. Mm. I was answering an ad, another ad, no, another <laughs> ad about, you know, you could get rich, right. you know. I did, the real, I did some real estate. I was doing all these entrepreneurial things, trying to find my way, right. young 21, 22, 23 mm -hmm. years old. And uh, I was getting involved with the credit card industry, but at, at, this is what they told me. They said, I was living in Tampa, Florida at the time. They said, okay, Chuck, we have reps down there. But we cannot seem to get anyone t in New York or go to the stores in New York City because mm -hmm. it's just a rough market, but we want to go into New York. Neighborhood too. And I said, okay, hey, watch that. I'm from New York. Mm -hmm. I can handle right. it. And so I remember now I was gone from New York for seven years. Mm -hmm. And so I come back to the city, and next thing you know, they, they give me this huge case to sell this credit card machine okay. and get people to go from the paper base mm -hmm. and calling on the phone to this electronic system. Mm -hmm. right. And it's leading to what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going door to door, and the New York merchants are rude. 
Get they, out. I don't know why. But <laughs> 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 and so I'm getting kicked out. They're yeah. cussing me out. And I'm trying to follow the rules of that the, tr the sales training that right. the bank has given me. But it wasn't working. Right. So, but after about a week of sleeping on my mother's couch, yeah. and she's telling me, well, are you coming home today? <laughs> uh, you coming I, back? <laughs> yeah, and so I made a decision. I'm not going to, I'm not, mm -hmm. I didn't come here for nothing. Mm -hmm. So I went, went to a particular store, and I was upset. Mm -hmm. And the, the store owner, it was a long line. It was people, and the main reason why it was long because people he had to call for each authorization right. for the credit mm -hmm. card, oh and so I'm walking in with my machine. Mm -hmm. I'm skipping the line. People are cussing me out. I open up the machine. I said I took a, a woman's credit card. Uh -huh. I swiped it on my little demo. It didn't really go through. <laughs> I swiped it on the machine, and I said this money would have been in your account in two days, and then you would have paid half the cost, and you, she would have been out of here, and you could have taken care of it. He said I buy it. Wow. So the point is, you just had so to do things. Different. I had to do things different. I had we had to yeah. break things. Had to break the rules. Right. And then and at that point, I learned about. I started learning. I wanted to more learn more, not just selling it, but how does this business work? Mm -hmm. And I started really digging in and started meeting with people that that was part of the Visa and MasterCard Association. Right. Then I started meeting people. At the time, they had the Honor Network. This. Uh, uh, the New York Cash Exchange, mm -hmm. called NICE, and mm -hmm. MAC Network in New mm -hmm. Jersey. So I started getting, the, getting to know the people in the MAC Net, and the, in that community. Mm -hmm. And I found out that the ATM network and systems had standards that they went by. And there was a reason why you can go to one ATM to another. And I started to learn how that cold right. mechanics work. Mm -hmm. Then I got involved with food stamps. Mm -hmm. and, and EBT cards. And I noticed that they, was tr they needed help developing standards. Mm -hmm. And I took the knowledge in, that I've learned right. from mm -hmm. credit cards and mm -hmm. ATM and helped out the, the committee uh, on standards. That's another story in That's itself. Right. But mm -hmm. it, 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 led to, it led to a certain type of thinking mm -hmm. that even though you're entrepreneurial, that you have to work within yep. standards and if you wanted to expand and grow your, your mm -hmm. business. And as a result of that, I ended up winning a con uh, my first contract uh, to set up entrepreneur, not entrepreneur, but set up the mm -hmm. bodegas in New York City. Mm -hmm. If you, anyone that's been to New York, they, I it's the, bo <laughs> the bodegas, <laughs> yeah. grocery stores, yeah. so that they can accept yeah. uh, food stamps and EBT cards. Mm -hmm. And so I was a part of that whole gotcha. infrastructure and getting that gotcha. going. So I, I did that. So I had got gained partnerships. I'm, I'm going to touch, I'm gonna touch mm -hmm. on partners. Sometimes it's good to have partnerships. Sometimes it's not so good mm -hmm. to have partnerships. I had mm -hmm. some not so good partnerships um, <laughs> <laughs> up to that point. I I can. Yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, end up selling the company and I moved to South Carolina. And I started doing some volunteer work mm -hmm. uh, for the Service Corps of Retired Executives, no, then known yeah. as SCORE. Mm -hmm. you, right. you said something about standards that I just want to give you back on. Sure. Um, you, which I think is an important pivoting moment mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, when we started our membership uh, program, like we, there were no standards. But mm -hmm. that allowed us to sort of reimagine the agency infrastructure mm -hmm. and put standards in place. Once we, once we could create once we could, could create membership tiers mm -hmm. with, a, with specific price points where we understand this is what the, mm -hmm. our customers are paying, this is what's coming in each month, then that gave us leverage right. to, be yeah. able to, mm -hmm. to be able to negotiate appropriate deals with our subcontractors right. and make the playing field much more level right. and appropriate. Absolutely. Standards, was a, I think, was an aha moment mm -hmm. for me in 2013. So I'm glad you yeah. brought that up. And which led to, now I'm going to the doctor, just like everyone else, and I noticed that I'm filling out the same paperwork over and over again. And I started researching this HIPAA thing. I didn't know what HIPAA stand for at the time. Uh, I started yeah, researching and yeah. saying, wait a minute, this is, this is crazy. Why, can't, why do I have to keep filling out the same paperwork every time I come to the doctor? And so I started on this journey. Here we go again. I'm on this journey again. <laughs> and, I'm, and while I'm, and so I, but I never got involved with like a technology type of company mm -hmm. or raised venture funds before or anything mm -hmm. like that. I was always a small business entrepreneur. Right. And while I'm in this class and I'm taking this venture class uh, with the Kaufman Foundation, uh, my instructor is telling me about this guy that's doing the same thing that I'm doing. And I said, okay, I want to I meet him. Right. 
And so we, we, he actually reached out to me. Okay. And uh, we sized each other up. <laughs> He's still living. He's still living. <laughs> and so uh, Adelie and uh, Adelie Abdul Kareem, who's my partner to this day, we met in 2000. I remember 2007 at uh, this this uh, hotel and restaurant mm -hmm. and he's he's telling me his story mm -hmm. and I'm intrigued and I'm like oh my god this is this is incredible and 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 in my mind I said if I want to go on this journey again mm -hmm. I don't want to do it alone and I want to make right. sure I have the right partner right. and so we decided shortly after that to team up mm -hmm. let's make this dream happen mm -hmm. and he, because he's telling, he, and he's going to tell his own story. I'm going to just let him right. tell his own right. story. But he wanted a solution for his family. Mm -hmm. and, I want, and I wanted to build a, a network and a structure so that I can get access. I don't have to gotcha. fill out paperwork. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, but it was the type of, the type of connection that we, that work. Mm -hmm. And then what we did, we brought in some other partners that were not great partners. I'm just mm -hmm. entrepreneur. I'm just mm -hmm. keeping, it, keeping right. it real here. Right. And uh, dealt with greed. Dealt with laziness, right. dealt right. with foolishness, mm -hmm. did all all those things. Uh, we actually raised money on when we and we started. Mm -hmm. Our first product was called the Health Stick. I never forget it. So, and what it was, uh, it was and, and it was ba uh, it was it was funny because the the young lady from the other segment she had we were talking mm -hmm. about this. We actually had created a a personal health record on a flash drive that was secured by your fingerprint. <laughs> mm. Okay. When was this? In 2007. <laughs> And so, you're really what? 2007? 2007. Oh to show you how goodness. far. Uh -huh. And so, what we did was through Adelie's relationships, uh, we presented it to uh, some doctors, mm -hmm. and they they said, "This is great, but you're not sticking that thing in our system." And so, mm -hmm. um, said, "Well, we have other problems. We have other issues. We really." need to connect and get, out, get access to our health information before we can even deal right. with that aspect. So we started working on this journey with this health information exchange mm -hmm. uh, process. And from there, it, we tried different vendors. It didn't work. We tried different relationships. It didn't work. We raised money. We lost all the money. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and in essence, trying to build this product. And and what it was, the even though the investors they wanted the health stick, mm -hmm. the health stick wasn't ready for the market gotcha. Gotcha. because mm -hmm. there was no infrastructure to support it. Right. Yeah. So, so it was ahead of its right. time. It was ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, we're but you just said something that's going to be a whole nother segment in raising capital. It not working. You're dealing with investors and how to deal with that. But I digress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but you know, you know, it's funny. Like you said, and, and the risk associated with with things uh, and being an entrepreneur the risk associated and, and people people don't really see the risk associated because you know you jeopardize your house you jeopardize yeah. oh, your yeah. family you jeopardize your car you you know some of the entrepreneurs have been sleeping in cars get out of my living room you know, and they're not, well, you got <laughs> fortunate because yeah. you were sleeping on your mama's couch <laughs> you had a couch I you know, had 30 days <laughs> <laughs> but but that, that's very interesting. I mean, cause that, yeah. those are the areas that you um, you go through, and, yeah. Yeah. and and as you go, entrepreneurial experiences, trials and tribulations yeah. don't stop when you're successful. That's right. That's okay, exactly they continue. Right. Yeah. They continue yeah. because you, you somewhere along the line you still end up sleeping on the sofa, or you yeah. don't mm -hmm. sleep at all yeah. because right. at night you're trying to. You're yeah. trying to get some sort of configuration. Mm -hmm. You and yep. your artistic world, you and your medical mm -hmm. world, those are ever-changing, you know, organization. They're ever-changing environments. Yep. And if you don't stay in touch, 2007, yep. you're doing fingerprints, and they're, they're just having problems with doing fingerprints today. Yeah. Still. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, you can... A, that's a great point, if yeah. I can just... Because uh, I, I, I've been in business for 10 years, and today I had the opportunity to do a pitch of a, a pitch event, and I learned so much from that. Mm -hmm. I learned so much about about how to how to bring my message in, how to make sure I'm targeting. You know, the, the, it was just it was ten years I've been in business, and I'm still learning. And I yeah. and that's what I, I appreciate that. And yeah. you know, I, I even in you saying that, and again, you know, these are things I think all entrepreneurs need to hear. Even being in the business that you're in. You are still open to hearing someone talk to you about a branding yeah, message, yeah. about a marketing message. You know, sometimes as entrepreneurs, you, you think you know it all, 
and you kind of close down and are, you, you're not taking new information in. And I think one of the biggest things that anyone who's running a company has to be open to all the way through mm -hmm. is knowing that there's some other information out there that they may not know. Absolutely. You know, somebody else can do or say something that can can open the trigger. A lot of times we know the stuff, mm -hmm. but sometimes we have to hear it again in order to move forward. Mm -hmm. Guys, I am so sorry we only had this uh, 20 minutes to have this conversation. I guess we'll mm -hmm. have to come back and do this again, of course. Thank you uh, so much, that, and I hope everyone has uh, been able to take some nugget away from the information that we conveyed in this segment of Capital Academy. Um, and if you didn't, then just listen to the next one, because you'll hear more, and then you'll hear more. But um, thank you, Pierre. Thank you, thank, you. thank you, John. You're welcome. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. And thank you. I know you were. And thank you for uh, spending some time to hear what we had to say on this segment of Capital Academy. And we look forward to you catching us again next time. Take care. I Boss Inc. Capital Academy, lighting your way to capital solutions.